he's the shove it man. All right, the squad. Now, the Hawk doesn't usually break character, but I will just for a brief second. As a YouTuber, it's essential to interact with your audience, and since I've been doing this, I've chatted to some great people who have really helped me just because they're kind, and I wouldn't know any of them if it weren't for this channel. You know who you are. But the reason I'm saying this is, I think just about two videos ago, I put a message out asking me to track down the missing MTV wrestling show that isn't Wrestling Society X. And within 24 hours, a legend called Peter spent his valuable time tracking it down for me and sending it to me. I'm somebody who doesn't really have much faith in humans anymore, but there are several of you out there who are doing a good job changing my opinions. Now I just want to smack anyone I meet in the face of a brick. Since I've started this channel, it's always been my mission to try and give the squad content that nobody else has covered. So here we are. Also, I'd have to smack myself if I didn't say this, but this was also a Patreon request that I thought I'd never be able to fulfill from John Philhelm. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today, and hopefully it won't take two years like John's requested. I wonder where good old John is now. Well, if he's anything like the rest of the squad, he's probably down the gym making the girls and the leggings grin. Introducing Lucha Libra USA. This is the other MTV wrestling show, also known as Masked Warriors. It's a show that ran for two seasons on MTV2, starting in 2010 on a Friday and Saturday afternoon. So this is MTV's final attempt at trying to break into the wrestling world. First, we had Tough Enough between 2001 and 2003. Then we had Wrestling Society X in 2007, and 2010 would bring us their final attempt. The show was also picked up by Hulu in 2012, but sadly they don't carry it anymore. The shows would have a 42 minute run time, so we're off to a better start, because at least these shows are longer than Wrestling Society X. And the show would feature many wrestlers we should all recognise. In fact, I've had a look through their roster. This thing should be perfect for my channel. And even more interesting, they adopted a hexagonal ring similar to TNA just a few months after they abandoned theirs in the Hawk Hogan TNA era. I'm buzzing to get this started, hopefully you're going to see why I was so determined to get my hands on this. And don't worry, this was a show for American audiences. The first series was split across three locations, Palm Springs, Paradise, Nevada and Springfield, Massachusetts. They don't exactly sound like bustling metropolises. The second season was sadly just filmed in Albuquerque. I guess they ran out of money, but at least I've heard of that place. The show got horrible viewership, which meant that halfway through the show they switched to solely streaming the episodes on Hulu. So not a good start. But that doesn't necessarily mean this is going to suck. The network may have just been a bad fit for them. Let's find out, there's no need to shout. In the intro, they promised to bring us killer moves, high-flying combat and outrageous antics. Oh look, Lucha Libre USA has its own Nitro Girls. The arena looks okay if a little sparsely populated. Looks to be a couple thousand people in it. They're doing a tournament to crown the first Lucha Libre champion. The commentary team are Nigel, Sherrod and Lalo Gonzalez. Never heard of either of them. The opening match will be a trios match. El Oriental, El Lemon, who is apparently one of the most bitter and sour men. And they team with Neutronic. They take on the Puerto Rican powers and Mascara Pupara. What idiot decided to book an opening match about a single recognisable wrestler? I promise you guys there are plenty in this company, so keep watching. The beautiful Nitro girls leave now, like when the Hawk took your girl. Neutronic starts throwing Pupara through the air and dropping his elbow. Now we trade off with arm drags. The first big move is a handspring coffin drop from Pupara, which gets him a two. Pupara does a diving flip into an arm drag, which sends his opponent out of the ring. Now it's a dive fake out, which makes his opponent dump in their nappy of anger and they rush the ring. El Lemon does some wacky dancing. They triple team Pupara with a triple kick to the gut. More triple teaming from the hills. A suplex into two top rope splashes. It's not over though. Why do they keep doing that triple kick to the gut? The San Juan kid is double spine busted and triple drop kicked. The story they're trying to tell here is that the hills are old men and they don't like the other team who are young high flyers. Out of nowhere Pupara springs off the ropes which causes the hills to take out their own guy. Another hand spring coffin drop connects. Finally, his tag team partners help with stereo crossbody and drop kicks. Check out this corpse grass AE moonsault, he almost slaps his leg on the crowd barrier. The Puerto Rican powers are dominating in the ring now. They have just too much speed for the old men. The powers flop out of the ring with double dives. The match does quiet down for a bit until Papara connects the cab driver slam, the cab driver slam, it's over. Actually, it's not. Instead, he climbs to the top to hit a shooting star press. The heels break up the pin and do a double schoolboy pin, which doesn't work. They also hit a final cut and a northern light suplex. The Puerto Rican powers come back with a wacky kick from the top whilst the other hits an inverted suplex. Unfortunately, the brothers from Puerto Rico missed their dives. 
The match ends seconds later to a double pin from a middle rope back sent on and a German suplex. I like Dale Lemon, even if he is a very sour man. Exciting opener, it's just a shame they couldn't have put some more familiar faces in this position. There's a really weird pre-recorded promo now from a man called RJ Brewer. He is an American. He says there's a lot of people in this company who may or may not be here legally. So it's a bit like a JBL gimmick, I guess. He says that the Mexican style is ruining the sport he grew up loving. Wearing masks and doing backflips is a disgrace. He's gonna make a statement. This guy was an RH wrestler from what I remember. Another match now. It wouldn't be a wacky wrestling federation without having mini wrestlers. It will be Mini Park teaming with Mascara Dorada. Hopefully they will be better than the TNA minis. They face Halloween, who at least looks a bit different to everyone else. And his partner will be... Alan Funk, who is apparently a woman called Chi Chi. Why were all of Alan Funk's gimmicks that he's actually a she? Was he or she trying to tell us something? And the lady he is with is Raka Khan. I bet you're all excited to see her again. I'm so confused. Why is Alan Funk in this match with the mini wrestlers? And he's confused too. We start off with the very first leg scissors of the show. Surprised it took this long to see one. Halloween is taken down again and again. Halloween finally hits him with a drop kick. What height do you need to be part of the mini division because Halloween is about the size of Rey Mysterio. Dorado goes sprinting off the ropes into an arm drag. He's pretty fun to watch. He springs to the top rope like it's nothing and does a sort of whisper in the wind. Mini Park has the tag for the first time, as does Alan Funk. Park does an arm drag which angers Funk who smacks him from behind. Funk is just too slow for this guy and he gets his wig knocked off. Alan Funk is now bold. Halloween back in with a kick on Park that left Jeff Hardy making holes in his nappy. Halloween's kicked over the guardrail and he struggles to come back. Tags are made once again and Dorado dives on Funk. It doesn't hurt him and Funk boots him in the head. Alan Funk is taken out of a wheelbarrow into a DDT and a dropkick. Dorado is slowed down by a Halloween big boot. Raka Khan reminds Funk that he's being destroyed by men half his size. Nice headbutt from the top rope now. Dorado is probably the best mini wrestler I've ever seen. And he backs that fact up with a head scissors with multiple revolutions. In fact, I think it was six. He finishes off Halloween with a moonsault to the outside. Funk's still in this one, but he might not be for long after a park head scissors. Park wants to dive, but Raka Khan stops him. She power bombs him from the top. And that gives Alan Funk the win. They celebrate to Lady Gaga. How random. As a TNA fan, I was glad to see them both. Even if it's this that they're doing. The other team were good because they had outfits that were easier to tell them apart. I have to say though, I'm shocked at how they got the licensing rights for all these songs. I guess it's because it's MTV, but we'll see more of that as we go along. All good so far, but we're a bit weak on storylines. In a pre-tape segment, a rich luchador is in a hot tub with chicas. Every single woman looks bigger than him. But when you're rich, that kind of thing doesn't matter. He plans on getting the Lucha Libre belt. Good luck with that, kid. In the back, it's Marco Corleone, the former Mark Jindrak. He's trying to help a fat man do press-ups, but he's eating at the same time. Some luchador walks in talking smack and claiming that he will be the next champion. Jindrak says he knows his dad, but tonight, he's gonna be his daddy. The luchadors walk off being dicks. A fun little segment. The main event of this show will be a tournament match. It's Tiniblast Jr., the dick from earlier. He's a second generation wrestler. He takes on Mark Jindrak. The fat man who accompanies him is called Solid. Well, he's certainly built like a brick. This is a pairing I can get behind. On a serious note, I'm not sure how long this pairing actually lasts because Chris Long, the wrestler who's playing Solid, was murdered that same year. He was working a second job as a nightclub bouncer and he was gunned down at the club in November 2010. He was only 33 years old. Madness. Now let's see what Jindrak's about here because he seems like a strange fit for this promotion. Tinder Blast Jr. rolls Jindrak all over the ring with a wrist lock into an arm drag. He doesn't like that so he simply smacks his opponent down. Jindrak does go flying now with a clothesline from the second rope for a two. Tinder Blast comes back with a drop kick to the gut. Mark Jindrak back in it now with a roll up from an ab stretch. They seem to be smacking the shit out of each other. Neutrobolic Steroids who was here earlier is here cheating and helping Tinder Blast. Solid is too solid to get in the ring. He's just too fat. It's not going well for Jindrak as he's hit with a bicycle kick. He's also hit with a punt to the face. Jindrak is dumped in the ring and hit with a splash for a two. This is domination right here. Tilly Blast does three counting chops before Jindrak says, shut up or I'll smack you one. He does miss his punch eventually and Tilly Blast takes him down to the mat for a two. More cheating now, but finally Solid does something. He sort of slops into Nutribolic Steroid on the outside. He's running around with his ass hanging out. Jindrak with a big dive out of the ring. Yet again, Solid has to stop some cheating. 
Then out of nowhere, Mark Jindrak wins with a roll-up. This Mark Jr. and some other guy rush the ring and super kick Jindrak. Is this a new faction forming here? Probably not. Solid is shown lying on the floor covered in food. Not sure what happened to him. That ends the first episode. Well, it's certainly less rushed than Wrestling Society X. I enjoyed what I saw, but I hope we can get to know who these wrestlers are a bit more. At times, it just felt like Mass Wrestler 1 versus Mass Wrestler 2. Mark Jindrak does feel like a weird fit, but it is only the first show. We've got to watch episode 2 to form a better opinion. Yes, that's right, it's two punches to the gut for the price of one. What a bargain. The show starts with Solid trying to teach a random luchador how to say types of food in English. He wants to feed him donuts when another man walks in calling them losers. The delivery from this guy is rough. In fact, I think it might be voiced over. He throws a cake at Solid which causes him to run into the corridor where he gets jumped. So they're fighting over food. I wish they'd make an effort to introduce us to the wrestlers. There will be a tag team tournament to crown the first tag team champions tonight. The first wrestler to make his way out is that rich luchador from the last episode. He enters to Biggie Smalls Notorious, and he is Luho Esquire. Wow, and this guy is actually Jesus from the WWE. I'm so confused, he looked tiny earlier, was it a different guy? Jesus has the honour of being in both the weird MTV wrestling shows. Oh god, and he teams with a mini called Octagon Cito, who enters the ring to the song All The Small Things by Blink-182. Are they taking the piss? They face Mysterio Cito, another mini, he looks like a rooster. And he teams with... You couldn't make it up. Guys, he teams up with Relic, which is actually killer spelt backwards. I can't believe he's here. Why are they even teammates? What's the logic here? The minis start the match, it's arm drags all over the place, and now the partners are tagged in. They seem to be matched in strength and they can't take each other down, but eventually Killer takes them down with a shoulder tackle. They fight on the outside where both the minis both try dives, but they're caught and shunted into the ring poles. In the ring now, Relic runs into a big spin kick from a squire. But Relic sits up because he has superpowers and he is killer spelt backwards. Relic connects with the super kick. Aren't you all just pumped to see Relic again? Snap suplex from the killer now. He starts looking for a camera to call out in a mysterious way. The little chicken rushes the ring to help at the same time with some devastating kicks to Esquire. Esquire manages to somehow recover from that and he runs up the turnbuckle connects with a back elbow on killer. Esquire also boots the chicken man off the apron. We get double dives to the outside. The minis are now legal in the ring. The chicken man manages to turn an Octagon Cito crossbody into a pin, but it's just a two. Seconds later it ends when Octagon Cito wins with a crucifix pin. So Relic loses. Not on board with that decision at all. We wanted a Relic push here, let's be honest. I also don't understand. I thought Esquire was doing a rich man snob gimmick, but he's somehow a face. Yay, I'm rich. Cheer for me. So it's an Andrew Tate gimmick. In the back. Oh no, it's Rebby Sky, the bitch wife of Matt Hardy. Not someone I was expecting to see on this show. She interviews the voiceover luchador from earlier. She asks why they were fighting over cookies. He is called Sadisco, and he denies the attack. Okay, I've looked it up, it's TJ Perkins under a mask. I feel like I need to Google every single wrestler on this show. I get that it's traditional luchador stuff, but I don't think it's a good idea having so many of the wrestlers under a mask. This is a US audience after all. Supernova is one of the luchadors who was beaten up backstage earlier during the fight for food, but he might be too hurt to compete tonight. Anyway, on to one of those tag team tournament matches. It's TJ Perkins teaming up with Liz Mark Jr. They take on Charlie Malice and Supernova, who is apparently the biggest and best high flyer in the company. But he's hurt, so that sucks. The heels are cheating, as you might expect. It's Liz Mark with a Hulk Hogan inspired leg drop. He learned that one from the Hulkster in WCW, brother. Malice and Supernova struggle to knock down Lismark Jr. who is a giant amongst men in this company. Supernova flies out of the ring for the first time to get rid of Lismark. Malice and Perkins fight for a while in a decent little exchange. Malice takes him out of the slingshot crossbody out of the ring. The good guys are finally winning. They want to do a double team, but Killer appears on the ramp and he's sticking his tongue out which sidetracks them. The heels rush the ring and Lismark finishes off Supernova with a total whirl. Relic may be part of this faction, but nobody cares. Just a bang average match. The Hill faction are doing a beatdown until Mark Jindrak makes the save. He is the John Cena of Lucha Libre USA. In the back, Alan Funk and Raka Khan are talking about being fabulous and their butts. Minnie Park walks in. He's annoyed at Khan for interfering in his match. She says she has no idea what he's saying as she doesn't speak Spanish. He won't shut up, so she kicks him in the gut. She completely flips out screaming and kicking at him. This girl is crazy. 
Rebby Sky interviews her now. She doesn't want to talk about Minnie Park. She says he's annoying. Apparently they were in the gym and Minnie Park was harassing him there. She said that he made her ears bleed, which made her want to pick up a weight and smash it over his head, but she didn't actually want to kill him. This show is helping me learn a lot about the inner workings of Raka Khan. It's another segment with the brewer, the pro-American. He says he only cut lawns when he was a kid because he wanted to, and he wasn't forced to. His mum doesn't like Mexicans, so he doesn't either. He will kick out every man in the locker room that doesn't belong, because he is the brewer. I feel like I'm brewing up a dump to shit all over this product. In the back, some luchadors are practicing wacky holds. That very man, RJ Brewer, walks in insulting them for not speaking English. One of them actually does speak English. This is Magno. Brewer tells them that they aren't dressed like wrestlers, they're dressed like circus clowns. He tells Magno to remove his mask. He has a very Lance Storm delivery about him. Magno doesn't like his attitude, so he starts smacking him one. A very entertaining segment, to be fair. This turns into an actual match as they brawl out to the ring. Magno does a plancher off the stage. Now, TNA fans could be familiar with Magno. He had one of the worst TNA matches of all time, a gut check match where he botched multiple moves. Anyway, they arrive at the ring where Magno does a springboard somersault sent on. Magno wastes a lot of time playing with the crowd, but he stays in control of a standing moonsault for a two. Magno tries a head scissors off the ropes, which is countered, and Brewer drops him on his face. The Brewer throws him with a few different suplexes now, but they're not enough to end the match. He teases the crowd by going to the top, but not actually doing anything because he is against the luchador style. Magno almost manages a sunset flip, but instead he's locked in a sharpshooter. He's in it for a bit before making the ropes. Brewer spends ages trying to remove his mask now. Maybe he should wait until he's won the match. Out of nowhere, it's a big flapjack from Magno. He connects with a hip toss and a back body drop before Brewer calls for a timeout. He doesn't get one and it continues going badly for him as he runs into a turtle world backbreaker. Off the ropes, it's Magno with a split-legged moonsault for a two now. They keep reversing each other until there's a ref bump from a Magno big boot. The Brewer connects with the clothesline, looks around in anger that there's nobody to count the pin. He then has a slap nuts moment and collects a chair from the outside, but it's not the sort of chair you normally see him wrestling. A swing and a miss from Brewer, then it gets strange. Magno removes his own mask and rolls around on the floor crying. The ref wakes up and sees this, and the Brewer is disqualified. I was not aware that this was a Lucha Libre rule. No removing your opponent's mask. Why did the ref not stop him when he was trying to do it earlier then? It might help if they explain the rules at some point. Instead, they're expecting us to know. This was a show for American audiences, so I guess it's an Eddie Guerrero cheating gimmick. That ends the show. The matches on this second show were just not as good as the first show. The segments were so wacky. For someone like me, that is great. I loved it because it gives me stuff to talk about for the channel. But I'm not so sure if things like an eating gimmick or killer spelt backwards is enough for casual fans. What I will say is I greatly appreciate the time dedicated to the matches. It's like night and day compared to Wrestling Society X. There's a lot more wrestlers in this company that we're yet to see that are familiar to you all, so that should be interesting. But basically, from what I can tell, Mark Jindrak is supposed to be the star of this show. And it's possibly going to be Liz Mark Jr. as the biggest heel, as I think he's running that heel faction. Now, I haven't got every single episode of Lucha Libre USA, but I do have enough for a few more of these videos. So let me know if you want to see more of that, and basically just let me know what you thought of Lucha Libre USA, the show. This was footage I've been waiting for for years to get my hands on, so I am happy I've got it. If you're not moving forward, you're stuck in damn reverse, and if you don't agree with that, I'll put you in a hearse.